how do I deal with the constant feeling of gas? How do I deal with the constant feeling of gas? And I assume by this question that the questioner is speaking about uh, gas that passes from one's body um, that would potentially break the wudu. And if that is the case, then طيب, let's read uh, what we have here, inshallah ta'ala, from you know, what ruling applies to this person. Uh, number one, if this person suffers from waswasa, which is unfortunately a very widespread phenomenon where so many Muslims are plagued with uh, whisperings from shaitan, wherein he tries to distract us from Allah by, by causing us to obsess about potentially insignificant matters and making us doubt the validity of our worship, the validity of our ibadah, the state of cleanliness of our bodies, and you know, distracting us from the higher objective, which is to be servants of God, servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, in relation to waswasa, if that is the issue, there are several you know, really good uh, answers on our Seeker's Guidance Answers Service that, that I, would, I would highly advise you to read through. But in addition to that, it is necessary to seek not only spiritual help, but also psychological help, because this phenomenon is a very, is a very uh, real phenomenon. It affects many people, and uh, there, are, there are solid ways and means that one could actually uh, deal with it, بإذن الله تعالى. And uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. If that is not the case, but somebody genuinely feels as though they have flatulence or they genuinely suffer from flatulence, meaning that it, 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 it uh, causes the wudu to be broken to the point where they cannot keep a wudu long enough to complete their prayer. This would mean this person is ma'adhur, this person falls under the category of da'imul hadath, and he or she needs to take the same precaution that a woman would take if she has excessive bleeding and is now you know, considered to be a mustahada, where her bleeding went beyond uh, the, the shara'i limits of hayd. And what are those measures? Um, so the person would wait until the waqt has entered. The person would then perform a complete uh, ablution, a complete purification, whatever is necessary for them to make salah permissible for them at that time. For the case of flatulence or gas, there would be no exiting of najasa under normal circumstances, so there's no need for any padding or no need for any, you know, sort of um, absorbing absorbing material. Um, so the person just merely needs to, merely needs to take the wudu uh, after the waqt has entered for that particular salah, not delay, right, not delay so as to, um, you know, take the wudu ahead of time or wait uh, another half an hour before they engage in the prayer. No, they immediately proceed to the prayer. They can perform as many sunnah raka'at, as many non-obligatory units of prayer with that wudu. And they pray the one fard salah uh, with that wudu. Again, afterwards they can pray as many sunnah, um, sunnah uh, or supererogatory units of prayer. And for each waqt the person would the person would uh, renew their wudu because they would not carry that same wudu from one walk to the next. And then with these measures in place, the person would ignore any and all um, exiting of gas as though it, it never occurred. That said, there's also the, the phenomenon of, you know, uh, thinking that one had actually passed wind, but one is unsure. So the same thing that I said a moment ago in relation to suffering from waswasa, if a person suffers from waswasa, the general rules of fiqh would somewhat change because uh, if they were to follow all the rules of fiqh that, that govern doubt, they would never complete the acts of worship. They would never complete their wudu. They would never complete their salah. So if they were to act upon uh, the general guidelines in fiqh, it would be highly problematic for them. As for the person who does not suffer from waswasa, but they are, they are, you know, they sort of unsure. They stood in salah. They felt, you know, something happened there. They're not sure if it was a bubble, if it was a movement of uh, of the skin against the skin. They felt something, but they're not sure. 
the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam uh, assists the person in this regard and the hadith clearly states that look if the person is unsure if they did not hear anything they did not smell anything they should ignore it and they should carry on with the prayer if of course they heard something or they smelled something and then they have some evidence that they actually did break the wudu now they can act and they should act upon that and the idea behind this is the principle that al yaqeen la yuzalu bi shak wa al yaqeen la yazulu bi shak that certainty is not lifted with doubt. So the same type of principle applies if you know that you have performed a valid wudu. Then a new waqt has entered. Now this is not for the person with flatulence, this is under normal circumstances. Uh, you, you, you entered into a new waqt, you knew or you know that you did perform a wudu previously, but you cannot recall whether you broke that wudu or not. You, you're really uncertain, right? You, you don't recall. Uh, in this case, you definitely took wudu. You are uncertain whether you broke the wudu or not. So now you have yaqeen initially. You have shak or doubt that comes afterwards. This doubt will not uh, abrogate that certainty that has already taken place. So this is the ruling. al yaqeen la yuzalu bi shak wa al yaqeen la yazulu bi shak. The opposite also applies. If a person knows that they broke the wudu, but they are uncertain as to whether they performed wudu thereafter. So that means they have certainty that they didn't have wudu. They have doubt whether they re-performed that wudu or performed a wudu after that. So this doubt will not remove that yaqeen. This doubt will not remove that certainty. And therefore, uh, they would consider themselves as not having wudu. And then they proceed to, to take wudu. It is, again, critically important that we monitor ourselves because matters of this nature, shaitan, unfortunately, he has a lot of tricks up his sleeves whereby he causes, he causes people to become doubtful of themselves and their states of worship um, by teaching them, you know, all these, all these little tricks and uh, all these little observations about themselves. And then they start doubting, is my wudu valid? Is it not valid? You know, if you find yourself perpetually doubting which rakah of salah you are in, or whether you washed a particular limb correctly or not, or whether you made istinja or not, or whether something exited from your private parts after you had performed a wudu or not. If this is a constant uh, worry and concern that you are plagued with, then know you may be suffering from uh, what is called religious scrupulosity, uh, if I recall correctly, and you, you, need, you need help with that. And the way to assist yourself in that situation is not through learning more fiqh, right? Learning more fiqh for your particular situation may land you in greater trouble than what you were in previously. Rather, what you need is spiritual assistance and potentially psychological assistance. Learning your fiqh properly and systematically with reliable scholars, reliable teachers may assist you, but because you are already in a situation wherein you, you, you need assistance urgently, your manner of, of dealing with your situation is not through uh, remedying it with fiqh. It is with uh, addressing the problem head on. And thereafter, you may uh, continue with your journey in, uh, in pursuing sacred knowledge. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah